Hi everyone. In the last video, we finally performed the login API call when this login button is clicked in the application. But just making the API call is not enough. We have to perform operations based on the result of the API call. And when we get the success, we receive the logged in users information and we have to save that user to our local storage so that we can identify that currently a user is logged in in our application. And to save the user to the local storage, I am going to use data store in this project. So no shared preferences, you are going to learn a new thing in this video that is data store. First, I will create a new module in my project. So create a new module. It is again a Java or Kotlin library and I will name it storage and I will put all the storage related things inside this module. So make sure you change the package name to minitails.storage and finish. Once the module is created, I will define an interface inside this module. Now understand this part very carefully. This is a Java or Kotlin only library and data store is an Android specific thing. So I cannot use data store in this module unless I change it to an Android specific module that I don't want because if I change this storage module to an Android specific module, I need to change this network module to an Android specific module because I'm going to use storage inside network because when we have the authentication key stored inside storage, I have to retrieve it to add the authentication token to my API calls. So if I make the storage an Android module, I have to change other modules and Android module as well that I don't want. So my strategy here is I will define interface inside this module and the actual implementation I will define inside my app module that is an Android specific module. So I will delete my class from here and I will define an interface inside this storage module. So let's define an interface and I will name it session handler. Right now we will have three functions inside this interface. And I also need a data class that is current user. And here I will store ID, not private, ID end and auth key. It is a string. Now inside interface, I will define three functions. But first I need to add coroutines to my build.gradle file of this storage. So I forget to change the build.gradle file. I have to remove this annotation and I have to remove this Java block. And now I will add dependencies and I will write implementation libs.kotlin.coroutines. Now sync the project and go to session handler file. Inside this file, I will define three functions. The first one will save the user to the local storage. So I will write suspend fun set current user. I will pass ID and the auth key. The second function is to get the current user from the local storage. So this function will return a flow. So we have get current user and it will return a flow. Make sure you're using flow from coroutines flow. So we have flow and it will return current user. And finally, when the user logs out, we will clear the local storage. So we have a function clear for this. Now the work in the module is done for data store. We will go back to apps module. And first we will define configuration for data store in our build.gradle file. Now here I want to store a custom data type that is my current user or user class. So that is why I am using proto data store and not preferences data store where I can save just key value pairs. 
I want to save a class. That's why I have chosen Proto Data Store. So first, I have to define configuration for Proto Buff inside my app level build dot gradle file. So you can get these lines from the source code. The link is given in the description of this video. And we have some configuration to generate classes from Proto file. So when we use Proto Data Store, we use Proto Buff for defining schema that we want to save. In this case, I am going to define schema for user. And to do this, we will create a new folder inside this app module. So inside this app src main, I will create a new directory and I will name it proto. Inside proto, I will define a new file that is user.proto. And inside this file, I will define the user schema that I want to save. So we use the proto3 syntax here. I will leave the link in the description where you can read the details about this proto3 syntax. So basically I have defined a user and I am going to have two properties for this user. The first one is ID and the next one is auth key and it will be generated inside this package. That means inside my storage module. So after doing all these things, sync your project and rebuild your project because after rebuilding, this user will be generated. So once the rebuild is done, we will define implementation of our session handler interface and we will do it inside app module. So in the main package, I will define a new cotton class file and I will name it data store session handler. And it is a class and I will implement session handler but I forget to add the module dependency inside my app level build.gradle file. So go to this build.gradle that is for apps module. And here I will write implementation projects storage. Now sync it and go back to data store session handler. Now at the top, I will define an extension property of context. So we have private val context and with the help of context, we will get user data store and the type of this data store is data store of type user and make sure you are using this user that is generated using the protobuf file. It is inside this package that we defined in the schema of this file. So make sure you're using this user and import data store and we will use the delegate that is data store. So by data store and for the file name, we will define user.pb and for the serializer, we will define user serializer because we are using proto data store, we have to define serializer as well. So let's define this user serializer first inside the same package, create a new Kotlin class file. And this time we will create an object and we will name it user serializer. And this object is a serializer and it is from Android X data store core. Make sure you're using this serializer. So serializer of type user and this user is from minitails.storage that is generated using this file. Now we have to implement members and for the default value, we will get user.get default instance. And for read from, we will write return user.parse from and we will write input. And for write to, we will write t dot write to output. So this is our serializer. Now what I will do is I will go back to my data store session handler and I will define implementations for all the functions. So the first one is set current user. Now to set the current user, we will simply use the context. And that's why first we need to get the context in the implementation. 
and we can get the context using this annotation from health. So we have context, context. And we will make a constructor injection here. So inject constructor. Now with the help of context, we will get the user data store. So we have context. I have to make it a private val so that I can access it inside the functions. So we have context dot user data store dot update data. And then I will use to builder and I will set the auth key. So we have auth key and I will set the ID. We have ID here. And finally I will build. So we have saved the user to data store and to get the user back from the data store, we will write return context dot user data store dot data dot map and we will map the user to current user. So we have current user at ID at auth key. So this function will return the user as flow. Finally, we have to clear the data store and to do this again, we can set the user and we can override the saved data. So this time we will set empty auth key and we will set a negative ID. So this is the data store session handler that we can use in our project to save the logged in users ID and authentication key for the session. So I think that's all for this video and later we will use this session handler to check whether the user is already logged in or not. So when we launch the application, we will check in the data store whether we have already a user stored or not. And if the user is already stored, we will check the authentication key by making the API call. So if the authentication key is working in our backend, that means the user is already logged in. In that case, we will navigate the user to home screen of the application. And if the auth key is not valid, we will display the login screen to the user. So we will do all these things in the coming videos. I hope you are excited and you are learning something new in the series. So please make sure you like this video if you are liking the content and in case you have any question, problem or confusion, you can leave it in the comments below. Thanks for watching this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.